Okay, let's move on to number seven then. So we're going to Celtic and we're going to uh, Jeremy Frimpong. James, thoughts on him being this high in the list then? He's obviously um, only been in Scotland this season. Um, made quite an quite impression with, with Celtic fans and obviously just everybody in Scottish football has been very, very impressive uh, with his kind of direct style. Why is he so high high on this list for you? For me, this, this is another one that comes down to potential rather than what they've already demonstrated this season now obviously Frimpong's had a fantastic season I mean when him and Leo Connor signed from Man City and Man U respectively on deadline day back in August you know O'Connor was the more highly rated of the, of the two like he was the one that was expected to break into the first team at Celtic perhaps you know and challenge El Hamed for a spot at right back you know and, and since then Frimpong's broken into the team he got man of the match in his debut which was a 5 0 drubbing of my beloved Thistle. And he's just, you know, since then he's not looked back. You know, that was his first game. His next game, he played, I think his, his league debut was against Ross County. Again, he absolutely tore them to shreds the entire match because he's just so fast and so energetic. And it's, you know, it's really impressive. Defensively, yeah, he's got some work to do still. You know, I mean, obviously there's a mistake in the League Cup final. Um, you know, he got sent off and he was, you know, lucky that you know that didn't cost Celtic like a trophy because you know that's a game that Rangers really should have won and you know okay sometimes his positioning can be a wee bit off maybe you know he bombs forward a bit too much a wee bit too eager but I think in terms of his raw potential I mean that he could be an absolutely sensational player then I've, I've been really really impressed anytime I've uh, like seen him play anything I've interviewed him as well I've just been like it just seems like a really nice young man like the way you see him come across in interviews is that really infectious enthusiasm you know he's just like that that's the way he is and you know I know a lot of the coaching staff at Celtic think really really highly of him and I don't know I think that for someone to do this I mean he's what 18 19 I think 19 I mean like he's he just looks like an absolutely phenomenal prospect and I think that he will be if he continues to progress at the rate he has already I think he will be one of these guys that, you know, signed for Celtic, stays for three, four seasons, then moves on for, you know, 15, 20 million pounds. It would not surprise me because I think that he's got, he's got so much in his locker. Um, you know, in terms of progressive runs in the Premiership, he's easily got the most in the entire division per 90. Um, he averages 7.89. You know, that's the next players after that are Johnny Hayes. He's got 6.15. Chris Ayer's got 4.99. So he's absolutely brilliant at bringing the ball out defence, and obviously with that lightning pace that he's got, you just can't, you know, you can't afford to discount that. You know, you need to be, you need to give him space because if you get too close to him, he's simply going to run past you. Um, so I, I think he's a phenomenal young player. I really do, and I think he's got a huge future in the game. I mean, Stefan, how how important is it Celtic kind of keep hold of him? He's, he seems to have really made that right back position his own for large parts of this season. Yeah, I mean, I think it's Celtic have actually been quite lucky. I think this season, the way and just how well he's able to, or he's been able to come in. Um, El Akhmed kind of signed in the summer. Um, this is obviously after Lustig left the club after doing so well for so long consistently. Um, um, although I think last season or two he did begin to really begin to drop off. But um, El Akhmed obviously looked like the very solid defender, and I think he has when he's been fit looked like probably the safer pair of hands in my opinion. But he's obviously got huge injury concerns, and they seem to be consistent injury concerns. So. I think one of the kind of obvious plus points for Frimpong is here is that not only has he been able to step in and really help Celtic, but by and large that position looks like it's his own going forward. Um, and there's there's as James says, you know, there's so much raw raw ability there, and you can only get better. I'd also kind of add like some a slight tone of caution when it comes to him, just because, um, you know, obviously being a Celtic fullback it does require you to obviously defend as well as you attack and specifically in Europe um, and I'm worried how much he might get caught out next season or whenever we do kind of return to football and Celtic have these really crucial qualifying games um, you know he's fourth in the league for dribbles per 90 but he's 15th for how many he actually wins um, Ball and Golly and Johnny Hayes are better than him in that in terms of the percent that they win and Stephen O'Donnell's actually better than him in that regard not that Stephen O'Donnell's bad by any means I didn't mean to put it that tone but you know that's kind of what we're talking about here 
He's 12th in the league for crosses per 90, but his accuracy for crosses is only 23%. Ball and goalies is 33%. Taylor's is 35%. So he's a good solid 10 or 15% of where he really needs to be in terms of how good his crossing is. Um, but he's obviously still got plenty going for him. You know, he's, he's, I think he's 7th in the league for key passes, for example, per 90. So just the sheer energy and the sheer amount of times he does it, 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 gets, the, it gets him over the line. But I think there are a lot of areas of his game that he really has to tighten um, or really cone and you know as James says these may be just natural things that come to players as they get better through good coaching through experience um, I'm just kind of hopeful that he learns his trade that way in the premiership and not in crucial Europa League games because with <sighs> to an extent Celtic don't really need a careless attacking wing back in, Europe, in Europa League games they probably at this point still need someone like El Ahmed uh, who can really nail down that full back position and make sure no one gets past him and I, I still think Frimpong has to prove that he can do that to my, in my opinion however as we've said as James said in terms of just sheer potential the guy's got the, the, the sky's the limit for him and if he can nail down these kind of three or four really defensive um, um, uh, attributes and improve he can be relied upon as a defender, not just an attacking fullback uh, in these big games for Celtic. Then, I think he can go on and be, as, you know, he's the, obviously Kieran Tierney is the obvious comparison here. But that's the kind of money you'd think Celtic would be looking to make off him uh, if he if if he can kind of get these things right. I mean, Stefan kind of mentioned it there about Celtic maybe not particularly needing a, a massively attacking win back in European games. But does this or does Lennon's system suit Frimpong in terms of how he's played? Because since the, the turn of the year, he's not featured as much in the league since the uh, three five two was brought in a bit more. Yeah, well, I mean, he was injured for a while. Um, I can't remember who it was, but I remember Celtic fans being up in uproar that you know their sweet prince had been like halved by you know some hatchet man. Um, but no, I mean, I, I think the three at the back system does suit Frimpong. Obviously, you know, it gives him more license to bomb forward. It asks less of him defensively, and he's you know he's got the cover of the right sided centre back. Uh, and also then frees up space in the wing in that you know, he's not got a, a James Forrest ahead of him where you know he's got to try and navigate his way you know create try and create space with another teammate on that on that side you know he gets you know basically licensed to just bomb up and down the wing which is what he's best at I think Stefan's right you know defensively is yeah he's got more to do he's got more to prove to show that he can be just a bit more solid for them in these sort of bigger games. But as I keep saying, yeah, in terms of his raw potential, I mean, I think he's like, I, I, yeah, I, I honestly don't know how, how high he could go, but at this point I wouldn't be surprised at anything because I think he's a absolutely phenomenal young talent. Do you think he could play in a World Cup final like Braffite? <laughs> uh, he's not quite as good as that Celtic legend, but you know, he'll get there one day. <laughs> 